Hey, welcome to Nutshell Maths, where we do maths in a nutshell. Today we are doing difficult questions. Uh, in this series, I get a question I've never seen before, um, a difficult question, and I give it a go and see how we go, and hopefully you learn something from me going through the process that you would go through. Right? Uh, never seen a question before, and trying it for yourself. I may make some mistakes. I made a mistake last time. Um, I may go down the wrong path. Who knows? I haven't seen it. don't know the answer. Um, but let's see how we go. Uh, this is a level 3 calculus integration question. It's an excellence question uh, from a past paper. I've got my timer. As per usual, pause it. Do it yourself. Give it a go. Uh, spend 5-10 minutes trying it. And if you get stuck, uh, press play and see how you compare to me. Right, let's give this a go. Play. So, uh, the graphs of y equals k minus 1 x squared k is greater than 1, and y equals 9 minus x squared are shown in the diagram below. Cool. Right, uh, this one. Uh, I'm straight away going to, I notice that these aren't labeled, right? Um, there's no, there's no label telling me which graph is which. So we need to use our, our knowledge here. If you're in doubt, I would plot them on the calculator using the graphing function, but we can use our brain a little bit. I know that they're both parabolas. They both have x squareds. You can see these x squareds here. Um, I can zoom in a touch. There you go. Um, but I can see this is a minus x squared. So I straight away know that this one here should be y equals 9 minus x squared. And that means this one must be the other one, right? k minus 1 x squared. This k is greater than 1 is just saying that this number in front of x squared can't be 0, which makes sense because then the graph wouldn't exist. Or would it be y equals 0, but who guess? Right. Um, the shaded region has an area of 24. Mm, so if I find the area and set it equal to that, I should be able to find k. That's where my brain's heading. Find the value of k. Right, let's get into it. The area of this. So I know the area of this integral. Oh, look, this even been nice with minus 2 and 2. I think that's a pretty safe assumption, right? Um, the area of between two curves, uh, minus 2 and 2, is, I like to write it here just for my sake sometimes, is top minus bottom, right? The, the area between two curves is the area of the top minus bottom. You could do them separately, but it's easier to do it together sometimes. So minus 2 and 2, the top function, lucky I labeled these, the top function, look carefully, I've written it at the bottom, but if you trace it, it goes to the top, don't make any mistakes there, top function must be 9 minus x squared, minus the bottom function, the bottom function is one big term, so I don't need to do anything fancy with negatives, k minus 1 x squared, like that. Okay, where k minus 1 is all one uh, constant. Cool. This will integrate to... Uh, I can't see anything simplifying. Oh, you. I think technically you could do that simplification, but I don't know if it's going to help. I, can't, I don't think thinking about it more is going to make it any easier. Minus x to the 3 over 3. Minus k minus 1 to the 3 and this all over 3 between minus 2 and 2 right so I'm going to sub in 2 and minus 2 this is where I went wrong last time so I've got to be careful uh, 9 times 2 9, 9 is 18 2 to the 3 let's double check it divided by 3 let's leave it as a fraction 8 over 3 so minus 8 over 3 minus mm, k minus 1 8 over 3 cool yeah I think combining it before wasn't wasn't the right place so we've done well there minus and we're gonna put minus 2 in here so this is minus 18 we're gonna be very careful if you're ever powering negatives, just do it on the calculator, be double, triple, so, sure. Minus 8 over 3 is minus 8 over 3, but it's minus, minus 8 over 3, so it's plus 8 over 3. 
right? Uh, let me just double check that because I, I subbed in my minus 2. Yes, I subbed in my minus 2. Yes, divided by the 3 gives me a negative answer. Yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. Minus, again, the, the triple of this was minus 8, so this is going to turn this into positive. Uh, K minus 1, 8, or 3. Well, they've not given me much room here. Right. And we know that this area equals 24. So let's simplify this. Let's hope it simplifies out. Look at this. 18 plus 18. I'm basically doing this expansion of this minus sign and getting rid of these big square brackets. 18 plus 18. Uh, minus 8 over 3. 3. Minus 8 over 3. And then we're going to have minus k minus 1, 8 over 3 minus k minus 1, 8 over 3. This all equals 24. Right, now for my marker, this is going to be hell, but this is what I'm left to do, or for you guys at the very least, that's what I'm left to do. I might even make this a bit more, give myself a little bit more room here. That's gross, I hate that what I've done there, but I don't have any choice. I would, if I was you, do a little star, go to the back of the page. But, I've got 218, so that's 36. Uh, minus 8 over 3. Minus another 8 over 3. Which we'll have two of those. So that's minus 16 over 3. You could combine that all. In fact, I'll do it now. 36 minus 16 over 3. Is 92 over 3. So my brain is already going a little bit like, hmm. 92 over 3. I don't love it. But it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? I'm thinking maybe I've made a mistake, but let's see. Right, I've got two lots of this here. Two lots of this. So let's see. I'll just reread this function. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with everything. Right. I've got two lots of this. A negative and another negative, so it's going to be the negative version of two lots of this. So two lots of it would put 16 on the top. So minus 16 k minus 1 all over 3 equals 24. I like that these are both over 3. That, that gives me a bit more confidence now. I can times everything by 3, make my life easier. So 24 times 3. Look, one equation, one unknown, I can solve this now, right? 72, so 92 minus 16, k minus 1 equals 72. 72 minus 92 is minus 20. So they're both negative, so I'm going to just change it to positive here because I'm running out of room. 20. 20 divided by 16 is this, minus 1.25. K minus 1 equals minus 1.25. And I times, oh, I bring the 1 up, so I'm going to plus 1. 0 0.25. Have I done that right? Oh, I've, I've, I've mucked up my negatives here, haven't, <coughs> sorry, haven't I? 20, yeah, I, see, I, I changed it to positive on my working, but not on my calculator, just got to be a little bit careful. 1.25, plus it, 2.25, nicely done, let's just quick, we've got time, it's 8 minutes, so we've, we've got, you should be aiming to do this in under 10 minutes, right? Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I can't see, I mean, if anywhere I've gone wrong, it's just the number crunching, I think. But because it cancelled out with 3 nicely, I'm pretty happy. I don't have a gross value for K. It looks kind of reasonable. I could graph it, to be honest, but you can't always trust that these graphs are to scale. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's leave it there. Stop the timer. 8 minutes 51. A little bit longer than the last one. But let's see. Um, right, I've got the answers over here. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm a happy man. 2.25. Whoa, this looks drastically different. This 
is this so different? Why is this so different? Is our assumption of 2 and minus 2 wrong? I mean, it's, it's not wrong, it's right, right? But, oh, let, let's make this big again, but. So they've used, they've made these two equations equal to each other to find the x-intercepts. If you look here, I just said these x-intercepts are 2 and 2. Nowhere does it say that the diagram is not drawn to scale. That's a pretty, I mean, I'm right. Two times the area of zero to that. Yeah, okay. I wonder. Correct solution for E7. Does that mean there's another E? I don't know. Well, I'm not unhappy with that. In fact, I think I did it better. But I could be wrong. The, this, I just look, put it this way. I know you're going to think I'm just lying, but I thought about this. Go back in the video and see where I said, is this a fair assumption? Yeah. I like, kind of just went like, ah, oh, bugger it. You know? But if this this didn't have any axes here, I would have done this. 100%. But man, if I was expected to do that on top of all this working, there's no way to fit that on the page. Yeah, I mean, I got the right answer. I'm happy with my answer. I don't think I'm wrong, but I probably made a dangerous assumption that we can learn from there. Cool. That's everything. Uh, as per usual, if you've got your own question, post it below. If you've got questions on what I've done, or if you saw any mistakes I made, um, please let me know. Hope you enjoyed and hope it was helpful. Good luck.